This is Uzo. It is Greece's national drink. It is a nice clear spirit, as you see. It is quite strong to drink it straight, so you need to add some cold water or ice cubes to be drinkable. So you go ahead and wait for it. This happens when you add water. And you are like, what is that? Am I supposed to drink it? Let's explain this as simple as possible. Uzo, like all the distilled drinks, is about 40% in alcohol. Sometimes this is indicated by the color of the label of the drink, although not uniformly for all labels. So what is the rest 60%, you may wonder? The rest is water that is deliberately added to the drink to dilute it in order to be legal. And there is also a tiny portion of essential oils from herbs added to the drink during production. Uzo has a mix of essential oils from anywhere between 6 to 10 different herbs. I will never tell you the exact herbs or the recipe because it's a secret. Actually, it's glove, mint, fennel... Okay, okay sorry, sorry. That shouldn't have happened. But what I can say is one, anise. I mean, this is no secret. Anise flavor is dominant in Uzo, isn't it? Now, anise and the other essential oils are diluted in the original alcohol-water ratio. 40% alcohol, 60% water. That comes in the bottle. Oils, in general, don't like dissolving in water, but they can tolerate it if it is in the range of 40% alcohol, 60% water. So, they are invisible when they are in the Uzo drink. But when you add the extra water, you disturb this balance. By adding water, you are actually moving that initial ratio of 40-60 to say 10% alcohol, 90% water. In this state, alcohol is not enough anymore in the alcohol water system to keep the essential oils dissolved. Remember, oils love alcohol as a solvent. So, they appear as millions of tiny oil droplets wandering around in your glass. Well done, you have created a cloudy emulsion. Light is refracted through those droplets and is reaching your eyes as white. Do you want to see something cool? To make the emulsion disappear, add a bit more extra pure ethanol, 95%. Because if you add extra ouzo, which does contain alcohol, it won't cut it. The cloudiness won't go away. So the phenomenon is reversible, but you have to add substantial alcohol to make it up to the 60-40 ratio. I mean, come on! Who doesn't like science? Same story is with another drink called Sabuca, an Italian anise-flavored liquor. And no, I, I don't have one handy to show you, but at least now you can tell if a spirit has anise or not. If it doesn't get cloudy adding water, it doesn't have anise. Tsipuro here is another spirit from Greece based on the distillation of residues from the wine press. And it comes in two versions, with anise and plain. Guess which one will become cloudy after adding water. Now, if you see just a bit of cloudiness in Tsipuro or similar spirits, where they could be that they have a little bit of anise or star anise, but as a minor, minor ingredient. Hopefully, now you know what is the Uzo effect. Unless you are still confused this with a day after headache when you drink Uzo, but that's because you have drunk too much. Go easy, guys. Always accompany Uzo with something to eat. In the next video, right here, it will help you navigate in a Greek restaurant to choose the right dishes for you and to enjoy the experience. If you want to hear more, comment, like and subscribe to this channel for the best food science and nutrition topics. It really helps a lot this video to reach even more people. Bye now!